groovy. Be my victim. The old cynicism is gone. It's gone. Hello everyone, Joshua Myers here. And Josh too. And today we're continuing on with our Nightmare on Elm Street franchise review series. And we only have like two more films left in this series. And we're starting off with the last film to feature uh, Robert, like to feature the original Freddy Krueger and the original franchise. And that is Freddy vs. Jason from 2003. For generations, they have been the two biggest names in terror. He may get the blood, but I will get the glory. Freddy's coming back. And this summer, for the first time ever, she's mine! Two legends will come together. It's time to put this bad dog to sleep. Of course! Freddy vs. Jason. Winner kills all. Rated R. Freddy vs. Jason stars Robert Englund, Ken Kurzinger, Monica Kina, Jason Rutter, Kelly Rowland, Catherine Isabel, and directed by Ronnie Yu. The plot of Freddy vs. Jason is that disfigured serial killer Freddy Krueger, who has attacked his victims and who attacks his victims in his dreams, has lost much of his power. Since citizens of his town have become less afraid of him, enlisting the help of fellow violent murderer Jason Voorhees. This time around, portrayed by Ken Kurzinger. I think that's how you pronounce his name. Mm -hmm. Freddy orchestrates a new killing spree. However. When the hockey max wearing psychopath won't stop chopping up Freddy's intended victims, and two ghouls start to battle each other. Again, I, I, I thought we made it clear in our last review that we're never going to speak of that film again. <laughs> oh, my bad. Now, okay, now you mentioned that movie, I'm getting like, World War II, like, like, or Vietnam War flashbacks of that movie. Oh, yeah. Like, uh, never mention that film again. So, on, on the real though, I thought this was a pretty decent, decent movie. Oh, that was a decent movie. I just, I like the story. I mean, here's the thing, I like the ideas of the story, you know, like, and it kind of makes some logical sense in terms of what both these franchises, you know, like, and in terms of what Freddy Krueger, at this point, Freddy Krueger's weakened in that, so, therefore, you know, he, he uses someone in, in the form of Jason Moore, he used to basically uh, create a mass murder spree to have people think that Freddy and not doing all of it, and therefore, you know, people start remembering him again and everything, therefore he gets his powers back. Right. That makes a bit of sense. Um, so I like that idea and everything. Um, also again, Robert England does a pretty good job as Freddy Krueger in this, so, um, like, you can tell he's having a ball with it. Um, and also, it's one of the few instances since uh, Dream Warriors where it kind of balances the, uh, you know, dark and sinister Freddy with the kind of uh, wisecracking Freddy. Yeah. So, I think it does it pretty well, although I think still think Dream Warriors handled that a bit better. Yeah. But still. Well, uh, Dream Warriors, this isn't even like in the same realm as Dream yeah. Warriors, I think. Like, this feels like a totally different... Yeah. kind of movie, you know? Yeah, and it's like, so, so I do like that aspect, I, and when they do, when we do get the, the stuff, like, to see Freddy and Jason fight, it is pretty fun, actually. You know, I like that they utilize stuff like, you know, like, the first time they fight, actually, is like, in Freddy's world, so therefore he has kind of, you know, kind of has the advantage in that and kicks Jason's ass. Whereas, uh, like, the next fight in the zone fight after that uh, is takes place in the real world because uh, uh, Freddy's pulled from the dream world into the real world like so many of the other movies. Right. Um, and therefore Jason has the advantage, you know, because uh, Freddy's dream powers 
world. It doesn't really affect the real world right. in that regard. So, um, so I kind of like that. So, um, I also do like the cinematography for the most part in terms of the lighting and stuff like that. Pretty cool so, entertainment. Yeah. Most of it. Yeah, it's like. Also, I'm not sure you can notice too. Uh, they also did something in terms of with the cinematography, like the lighting in terms of lighting both of like you know Jason's world and Freddy's world, like the dream two world, different, two different kind of styles and that. So Jason's world, which is uh, kind of like you know in the real world with Camp Crystal Lake, and that's kind of more of a bluish tone. And yeah, Freddy's is red. And Freddy's is red for the boiler fence in the boiler room and that. Yeah. So. Uh, so I do like that, and I think this, all that stuff is pretty good. Uh, Freddy's makeup is pretty good too. This is actually a pretty good look for him. Actually, my uh, Silicon Max up there that I've been using is actually uh, designed to be of the look from Freddy vs. Jason. Is it? Yeah. yeah. So it's the Freddy vs. Jason Silicon Max. I guess I can see it. I mean, and knowing that too, at least it's a short movie this film clocks in at 98 minutes but yeah it's an hour and 38 minutes and it does feel like that so it does move by yeah, i think it feels shorter than that actually i think yeah. it, if anything it moves by a tad bit too fast yeah which we'll probably get into my negatives yeah so. well that does but it, it, i mean in terms of like you know kind of like the kind of movie like this yeah you know it's like it's pretty well paced, yeah you know for the most part yeah well I mean, it's, I... not, it's not I, I rather like movies that feel like they move by a tad bit too fast, you know? Um, um, and in terms of any other positives I have, I think that's just about it for mine. In terms of, you know, things I'm like, you know, that I really do like in this movie. What about you? Yeah. Yeah, the ending is a bit of a cop out, which uh, you know what? This is a like came out in two thousand three, so I guess like and most people have probably seen this movie who are watching it anyway. So I'll just you know. So basically, the ending is a bit of a cop out. So basically, shows that both Freddy and Jason lived right. at the end, right. although and Freddy was out. Body, that's just because they didn't want to piss people off. Yeah, and but at the same time too, when you go to see a movie like this, you want to see one of them win. Right. You know, right. so it's like. Well, and I mean, in reality, we all know who won. You know, it was Michael. <laughs> um. Honestly, like, who would have you liked to see one? Jason. Personally, for me, it would have been Freddy Krueger because I'm more of a Freddy guy. I uh, see, dude, like, I like the Nightmare on Elm Street movies a lot, mm -hmm. but I'm not a, so much a fan of, like, Freddy. Like, uh, honestly, most of the movies, I'm, like, rooting for him to die, you know? So. Not me. I, I, I think Freddy Krueger is a kick-ass horror film. So, yeah, still, still. So, and. Still, it's fun to see. So, it's ass kick. Yeah, it is fun, but it's, you know, I would have preferred to see Freddy win. Uh, and you said you would prefer to see Jason win. Definitely. So, um, I don't know. I think a better way they could have done with that is if they filmed two different endings for the film and maybe played it in different theaters. I heard they actually talked about that idea, where there would have been, you know, some theaters that they had, uh, where they had an ending where Freddy won, right. and then the other ending where Jason won. Dude, you know what would have been so cool about that? If they did that and didn't tell anybody that yeah. they did that. You know? Yeah, that would have been awesome. That you know, would have been awesome. It would, there would have been so many cool debates out there. No, this is what happened. In reality, both really happened, but nobody would know that. You know? Yeah, that would have been awesome. That's what I would have done if I was, you know, I would have filmed two different endings and there would have been like, you know, some theaters playing the one where Jason wins and some theaters playing, and other theaters playing the one where they play Freddy wins. So, and I wouldn't uh, tell anybody, you know, wouldn't tell anybody which, like, first of all, that there's two different endings, and I would have two, which one's the right ending, right. so. So, yeah, um, I think that would have been a better way than just kind of a cheap cop-out of, like, oh, both live, you know? 
Because again, when you go into a film like this, you expect to see one or the other win. Right. You know? Well, and, and then I didn't like what they did either at the end with that, because they tried to sell it to you as like a big surprise, you know? Yeah. Um, it's like, and knowing that too, it seemed like also kind of cheap too, because it, it definitely seemed like it was setting up potential sequel bait. Which yeah. I know there were sequels ideas in the works. Uh, they were doing, uh, that one of the ones they had, which they even had a script for in that, uh, was uh, Freddy versus Jason versus Ash. Right now, I, I can't say that. I would yeah. not have loved it. Yeah, that would have been movie. cool, but... And Ash definitely would have worked both of them. Yeah. And technically, they are, like, deadites. Kind of, aren't they? Well, I know in the s script for Freddy vs. Jason vs. Ash, which turned into a comic book, uh, it turns out uh, uh, Jason is a deadite. What so. about... I uh, know. So. But he's a dream demon, so yeah. I mean, kind of did the same boat. So, uh... But I did heard there was other stuff too, like there was an alternate ending that was never filmed, and that was it, just only concept art and stuff like that. So basically where, you know, uh, Jason and Freddy are, like, are basically uh, fighting and then uh, the water, like, of Camp Crystal Lake and that kind of come up, kind of is designed to look like a hand, drag both of them, hold them down to hell, and basically you see Pinhead. Major, major crossover. Yeah. So, so with that said, I'm going to get Freddy vs. Jason a free out five stars. You agree with that? Yeah. I just, I, yeah. Oh, I think. Well, it's, I, I, I agree with that. Yeah, I give it a three out of five stars too. Yeah, I think it's a decent movie for what it ended up being with all the problems it had behind the scenes and that. You know, I'm kind of surprised we even got a movie that was at least decent. And especially hearing some of the original concepts and stories they had, they sounded a whole lot worse than what this ended up being. I have no idea. Oh. Huh. Um, but yeah, like for me, it's like, you know, like, it's, like, when we do get to see Freddy and Jason fight in this movie, it is pretty fun. Although I will say there's sometimes, like, when Freddy is using Jason's ball machine, it's a bit too much, you know? Uh, but, I mean, it is fun, you know, it's, uh, and that when, when you do get to see them fight, but all the stuff in between it is just kind of just uh, pretty yeah, generic. Pretty generic, and even then it's not awful, but it's like, what, especially after, like, because this film was in development for, like, over a decade, and when your, like, expectations were that hot for something like Freddy vs. Jason, I mean, do you think you would have expected a lot more? Yeah. So, yeah. It's like, overall, I think this is a decent time, like, it's a decent time, you know, if it's, it's one of those films where I think if I wanted to, you know, just have some dumb fun and stuff like that, I would probably put it on, you know? But in terms of, like, a really good film in either franchise, I probably wouldn't, you know, go for this, really. Mm hmm you know, like, with say a good film of Viper franchise, I probably would put something, like, more like... See, in, uh... Nightmare on Street, I'd probably put more, like, of the original New Nightmare or Dream Warriors on, more so. And then, as I said, in terms of Viper Team, you know, uh, I would probably put in just, you know, like, the original and stuff like that more. Uh, and some of the other films, I, which I'll get to when we get, get to to the review so uh but if you would just want to have a dumb fun time and that this is fine. you know this is this is fine you know you could do a lot worse mm -hmm. with this so uh but also with just how much build up this film had over a decade in development and that it should have been much better yeah, it had a pretty high expectations so and i just think there were a lot of wrong choices in terms of like getting this film made and the final product does show that. Yeah. So that's it for this review. Thank you guys for watching, and see you next time. Adios.